welcome back to the channel. Uh, not much happening here flying wise. The weather is not very good. It's raining, it's cold, it's wet, it's winter. So I just thought I'd do something a little different. Now, now I'm not uh, pivoting the channel. I'm not changing direction. I just want to give you some content. And a lot of people online leave comments on videos saying, wow, fancy seeing you here, XJet, because I spend a lot of time on YouTube. If you're going to be a, a competent YouTube content creator, you've got to be aware of what's going on on the platform. So I spend quite a few hours every day just watching videos, other people's videos. I do that for a number of reasons. I've got to stay informed with what's happening in the area in which I create content. That's the, the hobby, drones, model aircraft, and so forth. But I've also got to be aware of the changes in the platform and so forth and the way people are using it. There's no better way to do that than to remain a, a hard and fast user. Now, of course, this is one of the reasons I hate the amount of advertising on YouTube. And people are probably saying, well, why don't you just get YouTube Premium? If you use it that much and the ads are such an annoyance, just get YouTube Premium. And I've got to say, it is tempting, but, but I do not want to forget just how bad the advertising is. If I got YouTube Premium, I might just forget all about how bad ads are and think, oh, I'll just throw some more ads in my videos. I want to be able to relate to the vast majority of people who do not have YouTube Premium and have to sit through these damn ads. So I'm going to suffer through it just to keep my, my frame of mind geared to that of other people. And so I've maintained that empathy, that relationship. I'm not going to excuse myself from the, from the tyranny of YouTube's advertising. But anyway, this video is about what I watch when I'm on YouTube and I thought I might make a few videos this I'm throwing this out here I want some feedback on this go to the comments and tell me after you've watched this video did you want to watch any more of this or is it just going to bore the pants off you and you just want me to put only flying videos up when such opportunities arrive now as I say I watch a lot of YouTube um, you can probably see by my page here I watch a lot of different type of content this is all the YouTube suggestions a lot of hobby stuff other stuff um, other stuff and sci-fi scotty kilmer he's great um bit of gun stuff i i was a licensed firearms owner for a quite a long time but now living in in a town i don't have the opportunity to use firearms so i've let my license lap it's not a big deal um guns are a great hobby uh but making gun content on youtube is a very difficult thing anyway and of course i'm i'm fit i try to keep fit try to keep in shape so that's a lot of the stuff i watch but i'm going to focus on the stuff that i think i can share with you and that you might find interesting and I found a video today. Where is it? This one here. Look at this. I, we'll just have a quick look at this and you can see um, this is a very related to the drone thing. It, it is a bicopter and we've seen model bicopters. This thing has a couple of ducted fans on a pole and the man stands in the middle and there's obviously a flight controller and you can see the motors twisting in flight. Now this is apparently 25 kilowatts. It's got a 10 kg lithium battery and it flies look at this it flies it is effectively the jetpack concept taken to a slightly different level and before we continue with that i want to talk about this whole concept the jetpack because this is just the latest in a number of attempts to produce a jetpack let's go to this one this is the solo trek now this was a very similar you see a couple of ducted fans and the, the man stands in the middle there's not a lot of difference except this obviously is much bigger heavier more complicated because these used internal combustion engines this was actually started around the turn of the century and through DARPA and NASA quite a few million US dollars were invested in trying to make this thing fly ultimately it was a failure uh, and it brings up a very good point why was this a failure because also out there uh, let's have a look well, let's have a bit more look at the solo trek first show I haven't looked at this video but I saw it on YouTube so this is obviously in a museum somewhere they've, they've kept one I don't know what else we're going to see here it gives you all the specs and so forth is there anything worth looking at well there's the ducted fans notice how much heavier and bigger the frame is that holds this together because you've got to support an internal combustion engine and the, you know the fans obviously the gearing and all that sort of stuff look how much more work is in there than in the the electric one that I've just shown you this is and also this has vanes it doesn't use uh, variable motor speed or tilting rotors it uses vanes to control it so there's obviously a lot less control in this than there would be in the latest electric one and also there's probably no flight controller on there it's probably all manual so this is you know 90, 1990s 2000s technology it's not um it's not modern technology and of course it was also this one this being a New Zealander this is the Martin jetpack and look this is even more absurd we've got these massive great ducts here no stability um, and it required uh, a great deal of complexity Let's see if I can find some more flight footage look at the size of the damn thing it's hardly a backpack it's more like a little 
by two rotor helicopter you stand in they were going to take over the world with this thing it was going to be the best thing since sliced bread and there was it was going to do all sorts of fancy stuff and right from the beginning i said in my daily technology column this thing will never fly as a commercial venture and I repeatedly said that it's it's just not going to work. It's just way too complex. Um, there are too many failure modes and it's it's just terrible. And unfortunately, I was right and the damn thing um didn't didn't work. I mean it flew. It flew, but look look at look at it. Look at the the huge amount of work involved in that to make it fly and the, the cost and they even had to put a ballistic parachute on it in case the motor stops. And the ballistic parachute still took hundreds of feet to deploy. So if you're flying around low level, you're toast if something goes wrong. And with all those moving parts and an internal combustion engine to fail, the reliability effect was never going to be high. Um, but that's that. Let's move on. Let's go back to that. Um, to that. And it's called the copter pack. Let's go back to the copter pack. As you can see, much simpler. Uh, very small electric motors, ducts, and they tilt. And obviously the motor speeds change. So you've got torque control. There's no vanes in this thing required to make it operate, to make it stable. Um, it's just a brilliant concept so i can see this succeeding and of course it's probably more almost certainly falls into the ultralight category in the usa so you wouldn't need a license and you wouldn't need to register it it would be just take it out and kill yourself in it so this could be a viable commercial thing because it ticks all the boxes it's exciting it looks to be very reliable it's lightweight so it doesn't need a license i think this thing could do what all those other packs have failed to do so why is it successful when even the solo trek with its millions of dollars of government funding in the USA just didn't work. Well, it's all about timing. The time is right. The technology is now available to make this thing fly. Yes, it only has a three minute flight time, but hey, mini quads when they started had a three minute flight time and it will only get better. Now, if this was offered at the right price, I'm pretty sure you'd find people lining up to buy this thing. Adrenaline junkies who want to fly this thing and because it's got just electric motors, speed controllers and a flight controller, it's going to be orders of magnitude safer and more reliable than those earlier attempts at building a flying backpack. So yeah, this is just the thing I noticed today, which it's not a new video, it's 27th of May, so it's it's been around for a month almost, uh, but it is just fantastic and it's had half a million views, so it has been seen by a lot of people. Uh, now, uh, so that's a little bit of a background into these backpacks. Of course, there was the original rocket pack, a rocket belt which was used in uh, movies like James Bond and it even appeared in that 1960s quirky sci-fi series what was it um, Lost in Space they used it in that it was but again 20 second flight times and even today the modern version of that um, rocket belt is 20 30 second flight times not long flight times but this thing three minutes already and things will only get better as batteries improve so hopefully you have found this little thing interesting give you something to watch um, at the end of your day, if you like this kind of quick short content with pointing you to stuff that I find interesting, perhaps providing a little bit of extra information, then go to the comments, tell me now. If not, yeah, well, it was an experiment. I tried it and it failed. There you go. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks to my Patreon supporters. You make it possible for me to make these videos without those annoying mid-rolls that I have to sit through so often. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.